Welcome to DIY Man, where today I'm going to test out which one's better, a quarter sheet palm sander or this random orbital sander. I've been getting a lot of questions here lately as to which one of these sanders is better. And to be honest, I really didn't know the answer, so today I'm going to try to give you a really good comparison of the two sanders. We'll start this comparison today with this random orbital sander from Black & Decker. Let's do the unboxing. Oh my goodness, I wonder what could be in here. Oh my goodness. I don't know any, I don't have any idea what could possibly be in here. Oh my goodness. Oh my word, it's a sander. There's a sander in here, I can't believe it. Oh my gosh, there's a sander in there. I'm really sorry, but I've always thought that unboxing videos are kind of silly. Let's get right into the review of this thing. Probably one of the first things I look at when I look at sanders is the pad right here. I actually had a Black & Decker quarter sheet sander a while back and it worked really well except for the pad was kind of cheap on it. The pad on this random orbital sander looks like it's a little bit higher quality than that one was. That being said, it's also protected by Velcro so that should help it last a lot longer. Sorry, I just refuse to call that stuff hook and loop. Congratulations to Velcro for dominating the market. And that brings in our first difference in between these and the quarter sheet palm sanders. The sandpaper you buy for these things has to have Velcro on the back. As long as you buy a 5 inch random orbital sander, this sandpaper is pretty easy to find, but it is more expensive than buying the full sheets of sandpaper. Which is obviously what our quarter sheet palm sander uses. You just have to pull it out and cut these up into quarters. Now it's not really difficult to do this. You can just fold these over and then they should rip right along that line. So I guess the big question is, are you looking for convenience or are you looking to save some money? Because if you do a lot of projects, you're going to be using your sander a lot. Now I do want to mention that they also sell sandpaper by the quarter sheet, so you're not really sacrificing convenience if you go for the quarter sheet sander. By the way, I really like this sandpaper from 3M. I feel like it lasts a lot longer and it does a better job with removal. As you may already be aware, I usually use this quarter sheet palm sander from DeWalt. And I've been using this thing for probably about a year now, and it's a really good sander. When it comes to the mechanism holding the sandpaper on, this is a pretty good design. On some of the cheaper quarter sheet palm sanders, you'll find that they have a hard time holding onto the sandpaper. And obviously that can be really aggravating. Check out the wear and tear that's already starting to happen on the pad of my sander. I'm usually pretty careful with my palm sander, and this is one of the better pads I've found on these quarter sheet palm sanders. So as you can tell, this is a real problem with this type of sander. And when these pads wear out, these things really don't sand too well after that. One more interesting tip on these palm sanders is that if yours comes with one of these plastic things like this, don't just throw that thing away. This thing is made to poke holes in your sandpaper, that way the sawdust can escape into the bag back there. And if you use this, you'll be surprised at how much longer your sandpaper lasts. The sandpaper for these random orbital sanders usually already comes with holes, so all you have to do on these is to make sure it's aligned on your sander. Okay, to make sure this is a fair test, I'm going to use 120 grit sandpaper for both of these sanders. Then we'll see which one can remove a sharpie mark from wood more quickly. If you would, comment below and let me know which one you think will be faster. And I promise I'll try my hardest on both. First up, we have the random orbital sander. <laughs> Alright, so this thing has successfully removed the sharpie mark in 2 minutes and 36 seconds. And that seems like a pretty respectable time to me. I do want to mention that this sandpaper was kind of walking on me a little bit. And that just means that it seemed like it was trying to come off the pad on me. And I don't know if that's just because this is like a cheaper sandpaper or the hook and loop material on the back doesn't want to hold as well or what. I do want to mention that it did not come off, but I could see how it easily could. Now let's take a look really closely here. As you can see, the mark is all but gone. Now, I will be honest, there was a little speck right here, but I went ahead and decided to give it to this guy because this one was really stubborn. All right, let's try out the quarter sheet palm sander now. Alright, we were done in 2 minutes and 2 seconds. And if we look closely on our board on this one, I'm not really seeing any spots. 
Now to be fair to the random orbital sander, I was able to put more pressure on the front and the back of this palm sander, which I think is what helped me remove that mark more quickly, which makes me think that the random orbital sander might be better for making even surfaces over large surface areas. And while the palm sander seems like it removes material more quickly, I could see how you could end up with divots and stuff in your wood because you're focusing on one area. So my recommendation today is that the random orbital sander be used for final finishing touches on your projects. These are also really convenient and easy to use, and maybe that pad will last you a little bit longer. And if you're looking for heavy duty removal, but maybe not so much of an even finish, this is the machine for you over here. Hey, I hope somebody got value out of this video. If you did, would you smash that like button for me? Also, don't forget to hit that I believe button by subscribing. I'll see you next time.